Uh, well, um, in my own case, I think um, it, it, it uh, predated back to my years in high school. I had this challenge um, when I was to do my class four in my high school days. And, um, you know, in Nigeria educational system, we had the 6334 system, six years in primary school, three years in junior secondary, and another three years in the senior secondary. So when I was doing my first year in senior secondary, uh, a teacher was sent to come and teach us um, uh, the science of biology. And the way we were brought up in the local secondary school that I attended in my community was that if you have a, a class tomorrow, you study ahead of the teacher. So unfortunately, when this teacher came to our class, she defined biology as the study of living and non-living things. And I seriously disagree because that wasn't what I found in the different textbook I have read ahead of her. And this uh, led to a point where the school, the principal of the school then, uh, was still in the military area anyway, said that um, I have uh, insulted a teacher, I was put on suspension. And um, when I, during the period of my three week suspension, I was able to interact with other persons who, who proved me right and proved the teacher wrong. And I said, okay, maybe this is how people are being, uh, you know, brought into one corner because of the fact that uh, they feel that might is right. So I challenged that thing to the point that the, the school set up a, a parent teachers association meeting to look into my claims. And at the end of the day, I was uh, exonerated, and the, the PTA chairman, that is the parent teacher association chairman, ordered the school to apologize to me. And that motivated me. I said, look, we must stand up for what is right. And that has been my driving force. And I, I don't think I can do any other thing than advocating for what is right and ensuring that right is right at all times. Of course, it does. It does. Because I'm. Because of the caliber of uh, job I do, you know, interacting with members of the public and the security forces, building bridges, uh, of course, it reduced my level of socialism. I don't attend also shy events because you can be targeted. And in some, sometimes I've been attacked by robbers. My car will be snatched from me and all those things. But I don't care because all those things are just uh, temporarily antics to... You can only kill the messenger, not the message. So I keep sending out the message that even if I die today, the message will remain. No, 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 no. I can't do that. Even when I die, my bone in the grave will still uh, fight for the rights of the poor. Yeah, I never think of. I would rather die in the course of human rights struggle than to be stopped because I'm to stop from struggling for human rights. Yes, I have some success stories. Right now, where I'm standing to, to have this video call with is the call Abak Local Government. Abak Local Government is made up of 95 villages. And it has a divisional police command headed by a chief superintendent of police. And I can tell you, as a result of the advocacy effort that Compact headed by myself has been doing in this place, since 2015 up to today, nobody has ever paid for bail in this divisional command. So that's a success story to me. And by the grace of God, since last year, we have extended that to another divisional command called ITAM, I -T -A -M, uh, in uh, still in Akwa Ibom State here. So as I'm talking to you now, I can comfortably strike my chest and say, Two divisional commands out of 37 divisional commands in Akwa Ibom State does not collect money for bail. And that has been based on the engagement, advocacy effort, and advocacy effort of Compact, which I'm heading as an executive director. So that motivates me. And when I see those people who are ready to, uh, you know, invite change, to work based on the, 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 the dictates of uh, democratic policing, we encourage them. And that's why wherever I am, I have the opportunity. I keep telling people that. The world over and Nigeria in particular should come and learn from what the CSP Celestine Ome is doing in Abak and what CSP Francis Erabo is doing in a term division. But there is a challenge. The challenge is how will we be able to get somebody to step into their shoes if they leave this place? And what do we do here? What we do in Compact is developing the capacities of the community to own up to these changes so that they can constructively engage whoever comes in. So that it will not be a regime survival program or because the fact that a GPO doesn't want to you know get himself corrupted. Yes, I believe Nigeria will be a very nice place one day. Either in my time or after my time. But the only thing is I will want my name to be mentioned even after me. That I was one of the persons that contributed to a better Nigeria and the and the world at large. No, I'm in my office. Um we have office, but we what we do is that we create what we call a co-creation space for people who want to go into advocacy like what we are doing, but they may not be have the capacity to rent a space. So you can use our library and um, the hall that is associated with the library as your contact, and then let's see how it goes. And again, we also have to allow this co-creation in order to be able to guide upcoming activists so that they don't degenerate into, you know, um, 
uh, you know, abusing what they think that, that, that they believe in.